Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive and we have a brand new updated video for you on hafting stone points for your hunting arrows. If you've been following along for the last couple weeks, you've actually seen that we've been doing some new updated videos, bringing you just some brand new updated content on how to do it better and faster, and this video is really no different. So we're going to get into the build here very shortly, but there's two videos that I really need to make mention of before I continue with this one, because it's very relevant to this build. The one video is the new updated how to build river cane or bamboo arrows. And in that video, you're going to notice that I talk about drilling out and plugging the end of the arrow. That allows us to be able to really taper this down so we can have a very smooth transition into a stone point that's going to give us maximum penetration and laceration. And so if this was left hollow and we thinned it down, the walls would be very weak and they would want to collapse or break. And so we're not going to talk a lot about that in this video. That's in that other video in which I will drop a link down in the description and that's building bamboo and river cane arrows really the updated version now the old version kind of works too there's nothing wrong with that one but this one's a little bit better so i would suggest checking that one out the other video that's really worth mentioning that i get asked all the time is how do you practice with your stone points and the long story short is you don't but here's the thumbnail for that video and you should really go watch it because you should be able to make a cane arrow just like this, any sort of primitive arrow, and then shoot it with just a blunt end on it, tune it, put a stone point on it and go hunt. So that all being said, let's move on to hafting our stone points. Okay, before we get started, I want to at least give you a little bit of visual before we cut the notch. So it doesn't matter if you're working with a corner notch or a side notch, I'm gonna show you kinda of either one to run with. I don't prefer either style, I like them both. Now, as far as the depth, you want it deeper, slightly deeper than the notches on the side notch. You can get away with less, but you don't need a lot, uh, like a super amount of depth. You just want it maybe a quarter inch or so past the notches. Okay, now as far as the corner notch, you're kind of going to do the same thing. You want it just up past where the notches are. And then that's going to give you a little bit of room to smooth some things together. So that's the depth you're looking for. Now, when you want to cut that notch, you can either use a bandsaw, which we're going to show you in a second, or you can kerf it with a hacksaw or really anything that you want. In fact, if you want to see a full video on me doing this with a, with Stone Age tools, we have those videos as well. Just search Hunt Primitive Stone Age Arrow Build, or you can actually see me do it in a more primitive setting in the video from the earth. So that's been pretty popular. But anyway, I'm going to use the bandsaw and we're going to cut that notch in and then we're going to be able to clean it up a little bit with a file as needed. Okay, so typically, I've had a lot of practice, I'm able to actually cut the notch really well fitting just with the bandsaw. Okay, I've kind of got an eye for it at this point, so all I do is usually test it, spin test it, start spinning pretty close to center, and I'm feeling pretty good about that right there. So it's a nice tight fit. Now what you want to make sure is that the point seats all the way to the bottom of the notch. If there is an air gap between the bottom of the point and the base of the notch, that's going to give the opportunity on impact. If it hits a bone, like even a rib, it's going to dislodge the point and shove it backwards and you're going to lose quite a bit of energy and you can get some deflection and even fold the point over. So you want to make sure you have that really strong backstop for this point when it hits and also that the point spins nice and true. And this should be strong enough. If you start whipping this thing around, it's gonna come out. This should hold it tight, but not so tight that it actually splits the shaft when you force it in. So you should be able to just kind of click it right into place. Now, if you need to fine tune that, then I would recommend using an eighth inch file, maybe a, a little sharp knife. Be careful you don't accidentally push too far, split it and end up cutting yourself, or a little bit of sandpaper. But practice getting that nice, fit and that solid backstop and then we're ready to move on to the next stage. Okay now this is one of the more critical parts of hafting a stone point where I see a lot of people make a mistake. They get their notch fitting 
and you can really try to see the profile even hold my hand up so you can really see what that looks like they'll stop right here they'll glue it in and they'll wrap it and they'll leave this very abrupt transition and i really want you to make sure that you can see how it comes and it steps over and people leave that and this stops penetration a significant and i mean a significant amount we have a tremendous amount of information in this in the secrets and science of primitive archery we ran a lot of tests to show how much a poor transition or an abrupt transition affects penetration we need to smooth this up to be as smooth and sleek as possible you can trim the sides really really thin because there's typically not a lot of sidewards pressure all the force it's coming in on this arrow is is pushing it back that's why we need that solid backstop in our notching but the sides can be very very thin so they can be pretty brittle and what we're actually going to do is take this whole arrow and we're going to from about six inches back give or take and we're going to taper it nice and smooth all the way into that point now i have a special tool here i call this a transition training tool this is a plastic cast that we sell here at hunt primitive and it's a cast of one of my personal hunting arrows just like this one right here right so this one's already been hafted and if you can see closely you can even see that it has the sinew wrappings on it and everything so when you get one of these you're able to Put yours side by side and see the difference. So you should be able to see the difference on that of how abrupt this transition is and how smooth this one is. This is going to penetrate so much better, especially look at the diameters. The diameters of the shaft are very similar, especially here at the base. But notice how this one tapers way into that point is very very important so whether you get one of these tools or not that's not the important part the important part is you understand what the tool represents so people used to just order an arrow from me to model after and that was fine but instead of purchasing a whole arrow we made it so people could pick these up and they didn't have to buy a whole arrow but then you this is plastic you can drop it and it doesn't matter it's not going to break so if you had one of these and you accidentally drop it you can use this thing for years and years and years just to make sure go back and check to make sure that your transitions are very good now this is very important that i talk about this because this is crucial to the penetration shooting this into an animal so why we have to discuss it before i have it and this will be the last thing i should have to say on it put your fingers together like this and squeeze your fingers together now slide your either your transition tool or your arrowhead that you're going to haft okay and then push through and what you should find is there should be very little resistance you're going to feel a little bit on the transition and a little bit with the sinew bindings but if it stops and you can squeeze this really hard and you can push your hand back because you just can't force it through then that means your transition is too abrupt when it's nice and smooth you can squeeze and you should be able to just shove it right through not a problem use that to model after to make your hunting arrows and points and you will have a lot more success when you're out hunting okay that being all said let's get into tapering this one and then hafting it okay so how do we taper this in well you can either use a stone flake like you've seen in some of the other videos or you can use a sharp knife and you're basically just going to plane all these little curls off of it and if you just take your time and go slow you'll be able to just wedge this thing right out so that's the easiest method for you a nice knife and just taper it in or if you have the tool and you want to use it you can go ahead and use a bench sander as well and you can really clean this thing up and taper it on the belt that's what i'm going to do and then i'll go ahead and i'll show you what it looks like after it's been tapered okay i tapered it in here so you can see that we have a taper from here now all the way up nice and smooth now there's still a little bit of some shouldering here but we're going to fix that still so we got to glue this in with a pine pitch glue i also have a video on making the pine pitch glue if you want to search that up but we're not going to cover that we're just going to use the glue so if you need to know that information search hunt primitive pine pitch glue you'll be off and running on that okay so we're all cleaned up now we're just ready to glue it into place slicken it up and do the wrappings all right we're off and running so use a propane torch heat it up i can do things a lot faster about a two inch flame or so on that pretty good i have a block of pine pitch here i'm going to use my point 
and arrow are sitting here ready to go. Now what I do is I just kind of quickly run the knock. I don't want to really burn it, the notch, I should say, the point notch. Just kind of brown it a little bit and warm it up and it burns off some of the little extra layers or extra little fuzzy little spots. Then I want to go ahead and just quickly, about that long, heat up the point, keeping everything warm. So I'm going to heat the pitch and I'm going to wipe it into the notch. Now if your point, your point probably is going to fit better one way or another. So you can either mark it or you can test fit it one way and see how it fits. If it doesn't, spin it. Okay, reheat that a little bit. And the point, the reason it's important to heat that is because you don't want to cold shock hot pitch against your point or the shaft. And I will explain that a little bit more in one second. But now everything's nice and warm and I'm going to slide it together and it should be nice and runny still. Okay, and then I'm going to spin test it. Make sure that it is, in fact, in the correct direction. Okay, see it drips around a little bit, not a big deal. I actually got it probably a little bit too warm. And then I'm gonna lick my finger, cause that's gonna keep a barrier so it actually doesn't stick to your finger. And then we're gonna wipe it into all the little creases to make sure that we have a good glue line. I'm gonna wipe the rest on the block. And then, again, spin test, look down it. You can adjust it while it's warm. You got quite a bit of adjusting time until things cool. Now, if it cools and you can't adjust it, all you have to do is reheat it. Okay, so you can do this as many times as you need to. It's just a primitive hot melt glue. And it's heat activated, so all you got to do is heat it up and get your point set in there just like you want it. Perfect it, spin test it. And then if you really need to later, you can take another couple drops of this and you can wipe it right around the top of the transition. You can fill in anything that you need to fill in. Okay. Now, what I was talking about previously while I'm doing this, about cold shocking it, I'm not worried about breaking the point or the haft by cold shocking it. But what happens is if you apply hot pitch, to a cold shaft or a cold point, then it's gonna cold shock the glue and you're not gonna get a strong adhesion. So it's gonna be able to come apart much, much easier. Okay, now we really got that thing spinning nice and smooth, so I'm gonna let this cool. In fact, I got one more little spot, I'm gonna put a little drop just to fill in. Now's a great time to kind of fill your little gaps. And it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth yet, it can be a little bit lumpy. Then once it starts to cool a little bit more, you can lick your fingers again and you can kind of pat it down. But we're not done cleaning it up yet. We can trim that with a knife. So that's looking really good. We're going to let that cool. Now anyway, the cold shocking, as I was saying, you just won't get a good adhesion with your glue if you cold shock apply it. So you just heat it a little bit so the glue has time to actually set in as opposed to having that hard shock line. So you're going to have a lot better luck gluing this all together if you warm the components first. Okay, we're going to let that cool for about 15 minutes. You don't have to wait that long, but I like to get it nice and crunchy. Then we're going to go ahead and clean it up. All right, now we're ready to clean it up. It's nice and cool. So we're going to take the knife and just kind of whittle away at it a little bit here. Just really smooth it up. It's okay to thin the sides of the shaft even more okay so you really want to blend this in very very smooth so you can probably see that this side i smoothed in a little bit more and this side here is still a little bit rough so again just kind of taking and whittling it out really gently if you happen to knock too much off remember you can always heat it back up and add a little bit more pitch and then just clean up everything around the base I actually got a little bit too much. You can see it kind of ran over into these corners. You want to keep it out of the serration. So if you do that, you either have to chip it out or just go back and sharpen that. I said I got it a little bit too hot and it kind of ran in. But I was paying more attention to the camera than I was to the job. But I'm actually right now coming in and chipping some of it out. It flakes away pretty well. Remember, this isn't a glue that gets super, super hard. It gets a little flaky and crunchy, but it's still plenty hard, especially for holding it in place while it jams backwards, okay? What's really holding it into place is, or 
I guess not so much holding it into place, the, the glue does that, but remember it doesn't have a lot of side to side motion. The, when it hits an animal, it's, it's being forced straight back and that's why it's important to have that solid base between the base of the point and the bottom of the notch because this glue isn't terribly strong as a primitive glue. So if you hit something hard, it will break this joint loose cram it backwards and you'll lose a lot of energy. Now, I've shot through a lot of animals with this same setup and I've had no problems with the haft even coming loose. Depends on what you hit. Sometimes they come all the way out and they're still perfectly solid. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take my knife and I wanna clean this up a little bit more. You'll also notice that you probably start cutting through the actual cane shaft and you start getting down into the wood plug and that's why we talk about in the cane arrows building video plugging the end of this solid so not only do we have a lot more strength that we can actually taper this because remember if you taper this and it's hollow it's going to get paper thin right here and that's not going to do you any good very very soft so that's why we fill the end of the arrow and i wanted to talk about that so now same as we did with the transition tool make sure that there's no hang-ups hold this up with your fingers push through if there's any hangups, either fill them or whittle it down a little bit more. Now, I've got some sinew here that I chew on, and that's deer tendon, deer backstrap sinew. Take the whole strip of, of uh, back sinew and you peel a piece of it off. You don't have to pound it or anything like that. I take the whole back strap. If I have one here, I'll show it to you. So here's a little one here. I'll split that out, save that one for later, and then I just grab one little thread of it and peel it off, and then that's what I'll chew and use. And typically one full strand length is all you need. Now, don't mound this up that you ruin this beautiful transition you make. I start right below the point, and I just pinch it with my thumb. Now I do basically a figure eight, keeping this as flat as I can, and I pull it fairly tight, not crazy tight, but it's got a, a tiny, tiny bit of stretch. And then I figure eight around to where it looks like this, and then the backside looks like this. Okay, now I'm going to come and then flat around the back, and then the rest, I wrap right behind the point. And I wanna go back about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch or so. So that's what's gonna look like when it's still fresh. And see, it comes back. You don't need to wrap it way far down. Now, if you have a little extra, you can wrap it. But I say a half inch is plenty. That's really all that you need. But it is very important that you wrap below the point. Just like on the knock of the arrow, that has quite a bit of stress on it. And that sinew, as it dries, is gonna shrink a little tighter. Now, you don't need to tie this off. If you notice, I just wrapped it and it lays over on itself. In fact, I can pick up the end. See what I did there? But you just lay it on itself. It has natural glues, and those glues actually activate even more if you chew the sinew. But that's about as far back as you need to wrap it, but you do need to wrap it or else you're gonna split your shaft when you hit something. But notice I didn't mound it up. I had one figure eight all the way around the point, and then I neatly stacked these together. If you start mounding these things up, you're gonna ruin your transition. Now, the transition does look a little bit thicker now, but remember this stuff is swelled up because it's wet. As it dries, it's going to shrink and tighten, and it's gonna lay nice and flat. So that's why you do one nice clean wrapping all the way down. If you have to go multiple times through this, you're, you, it's completely unnecessary, you're wasting material, and you're also mounding up your transmit transition that needs to be very smooth. So we're gonna let this dry a few minutes, and then we'll put a, just a little coat of wood glue on it, and it's ready to go. All right, just one little dab. Well, actually, I probably need a little bit more than that. Two little dabs of wood glue. And we're gonna wipe it with the direction that we wrapped it so we don't unravel it. Like I said, you don't need to tie it off or anything like that. We're just gonna put one little coating of glue. And then as soon as this is dry, which it'll take, oh, anywhere, depends on your humidity, could be anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. When it's clear and you can tell it's no longer milky with the glue color and it's just nice and amber, basically like the, the knocks and around the fletchings are on this arrow, then you know it's ready to go. And you'll notice that this will shrink in right here where it still looks like it's a little swelled up. It'll dry and it'll shrink right in and it'll be just like 
our transition training tool. And so again, we talk about how important this is in the secrets and science of primitive archery a lot. And then if you need to know some other stuff or want some more detailed step-by-step, -step, we have the new book, The Secrets and Science of Building Bows and Arrows, which really covers the whole building process of bows and arrows in general. So uh, hopefully this helps you half your points. Check out the books. Thanks for following along, and hopefully this gets you where you want to be in your own primitive building and hunting adventures.